Mark, thanks very much. I am joined by Senator Johansson. Instant reaction to what we just heard from the president, a long speech, a meaty speech, and some ideas put on the table in terms of deficit reduction. What do you make of what he said and his willingness to work with Republicans on these issues? Positive side, he's engaged. Uh, you know, after a lot of prompting in a letter from 64 of us in the Senate, it appears to me that he's attempting to come to the table. The other side of the equation is what he talked about, largest tax increase in history. Let's just be candid about it. If his plan were to go in effect, that's what happens. Um, no way of sugarcoating this. He's talking about Medicare rationing. Uh, there just isn't any way around it when you get down to it in very significant cuts in defense spending. So cuts in defense spending, Medicare is hit, and all of a sudden you've got the largest tax increase in history. So his plan needs a lot of work, uh, but at least he's coming to the table. He's talking about $4 trillion in deficit reduction over 12 years. That's roughly in line with what we heard from the Deficit Commission and from Paul Ryan, his plan over in the House of Representatives. He gets after it, certainly in a much different way. But are these the kinds of numbers we need to be talking about? I'd like to see him push further. I think we just have to. For one thing, I think it would send such a positive sig signal to the economy, to the job creators, to the world economy. Um, so I'd like to see that number pushed higher. I think it needs to be pushed higher. Um, the other piece of it is that, uh, you know, a lot of what he's doing is raising revenues. The worry I have about that is the higher you push up those taxes, the more you suppress economic growth. And there's just a point at which you can't squeeze any more revenues out of the economy because the tax increases have a depressing effect. So the balancing act here is very, very difficult. Final thing I would say on that, I'd love to see his plan scored by the Congressional Budget Office to see what this is really about and whether the savings are real and can be scored and brought to the table. Let me ask you about the tax component, because we had the House Speaker already, before he even showed up at the White House today, said raising taxes is a non-starter with us. We're hearing sort of the same message from you uh, right here. There are budget experts you know say, so listen, shared sacrifice. You're going to have to get some on the revenue side, some on the spending cut side. The president's ratio here, $3 in spending cuts for every $1 in tax increases. That's not something Republicans can be able to work with. Well, here's what I'd say. I know where he got that. He got that from the Reagan years, and he's trying to sell that as his plan. But again, no way of sugarcoating it. This would be the largest tax increase in history. This is a gigantic tax increase. A fair amount of that is going to hit job creators. Now, here's what I would offer. As we think about going to the table, Republicans, Democrats, White House, uh, the House, uh, and the Senate, Let's put all of our biases aside. My bias, obviously, is not to raise taxes, but let's go in there with a clean sheet of paper and let's start trying to figure out how to get this stuff set down because nothing will work. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, defense spending, nothing will work with defense uh, or with deficits at this level. It's dangerous for our economy to have deficits over a trillion dollars every year as far as the eye can see. Some of your colleagues are meeting behind closed doors. They have been over the last few weeks, this gang of six, Republicans and Democrats trying to put the Deficit Commission plan into legislative reality. You're not part of those talks originally. Tell me what you make of those conversations in light of what the president's outlined today. Does that discussion go away, or do you think that one takes uh, takes up even more traction now, I, given what the president's outlined? I don't think the discussion will go away at all. Keep in mind, most of what the president is talking about is an idea from here and an idea from there. Some of this is not new at all. So I can't say that anyone was throwing a real curveball today by the president. I think as much as anything, what I take away from this is, look, he wants to, to try to be engaged. The president needs to be engaged. But I still believe that, that that group that's been working through these issues is very valuable, and I'm hoping they come out with a proposal. But the day is coming. You know, we're hopefully within weeks of everything being out, every proposal being on the table, and then we sit down and start working through this. In the meantime, you've got a debt ceiling vote coming yeah. up. We had the battle over the government shutdown, the vote on the, the continuing resolution even taking place in the next few days here. How does this debt ceiling issue get resolved in, in the meantime? Can it get resolved uh, amicably? Because there are a lot of folks out in the investing world watch this very carefully, not just here in the United States, but around the world. 
Many of us are willing to deal with the debt ceiling issue. I think under any plan out there, debt ceiling has to be increased just simply because you can't snap your fingers and make the deficit go away. There's no plan that does that. However, the important thing is we need a pathway to start reducing that deficit. We need something identifiable, something real that says we've started a different course for this nation, which is getting the deficit under control. Then I think the, def, uh, the debt ceiling issue will come to a vote. It probably is going to get the votes it needs. If nothing is done on that, if there's no pathway, then I just think that the debt ceiling issue is going to be a tough battle. Let me just say one final question. Just a couple seconds left here. Do you believe there is the will within this Congress in this year, before presidential election year, to reach this kind of deal on a bipartisan deficit reduction package? Does it have to happen this year? It really needs to happen this year. If it doesn't, then it won't happen next year in a presidential election year. Then you get kicked off a ways. Um, the answer to your question, though, is yes, the will is there. I was shocked when Senator Bennett and I got 64 uh, signatures, 32 Republicans, 32 Democrats, almost overnight, calling on the president uh, to engage in this process. I'm glad he did today. I think really it's his first step. That's an in indication that maybe we can get all the right parties at the table. Better late than never? Better late than never. All right. Senator Johans, thank you for the time. Appreciate you joining us here on Bloomberg.